Why? All right, so basically, uh, I used to be a financial, uh, I used to be a Maya animator, and I worked on a lot of games, and um, at some point, uh, I became older, and my coworkers became younger, and it was uh, time to make a transition into my uh, new career. My original degree uh, was economics, and somehow I fell into art, and this isn't working. So basically, um, I looked at my situation and I realized that I didn't have anything saved because of my job hopping and I looked around at a lot of my coworkers and they were in the same situation and through that experience I decided to take a, um, a career change and move into uh, planning for retirement and helping uh, myself get there and helping my coworkers get there. So let's see here. So basically, uh, today I want to talk to you about, you've got your job, uh, the, uh, the uh, young man who's uh, serving us at our beer tonight just got a job at uh, Game Salad um, as a sound guy, and uh, so what do you do now? Well, uh, uh, most of you have uh, some sort of credit cards or savings accounts or 401ks or some other type of investment account, but what all these accounts have in common is they're all gaining interest. Um, and that interest is compounding. It, that is building upon the interest that it earned yesterday. Uh, so an example would be, let's see if this works. And it doesn't. Hmm. All right, so I'm just gonna have to talk to, to do this one. All right, so basically what it is is um, if and I've had clients who do this. I work as a financial advisor, and a client came to me a couple of months ago, and she had uh, a car a bill that she paid on her car uh, two years ago for $1,200 that she hadn't paid off, and it, she was paying $2,000 still owed on this original car bill of $1,200 from three years ago. Um, that's not a wise thing to do. Uh, if you buy a house today and you get 5% loan on that house, over the next 30 years, not only you'll pay off that $200,000 cost of the house, but you'll pay an additional 174,000 in interest. So that's what compound interest does. It just keeps building upon, building upon, building upon. And if you're not paying your, 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 your bills or your debts um, in a timely fashion, then you get thrown under the bus. But the point of my talk is you can use compound interest to work to your advantage. And uh, that's what you want. You want the compound interest working for you, not against you. And that's what here, I'm here to show you to, uh, about today. Um, the mathematical formula for compound interest is easy. It's uh, uh, the amount of money if you, you've accumulated will equal the uh, principal amount that you start with, in parentheses, 1 plus R over uh, N times n to the t power. <laughs> That's very complicated. You don't need to know that. There's a very simple rule called the rule of 72. And I thought the rule of 72 was something that was recently introduced, but actually it had been introduced back in 1840, uh, 1894, um, or I'm sorry, 1494, when, uh, about two years after Columbus discovered America. The rule of 72 is simple as this. L the length of time that you invest times the interest that you're getting, when it equals the number 72, your investment will double. So basically, uh, for an example, uh, my Wells Fargo savings account, like most of you have, at B of A or whatever, um, is gaining me 0.05% interest. If I have $100 in there, at 0.05 interest, it'll take 1,440 years for that money to double to $200. Now, if I just graduated UT, that would be fine. <laughs> but I actually graduated back in 1989, and I want to retire in 20 years. So I need something that's going to get me better rate of return so that uh, it'll grow faster. Well, um, I'll take a look at a CD. Uh, a CD right now, the best CD that you can find is returning 2.49%. So now at 2.49%, my money will double in 29 years. So that's a little bit better. My, my goal to retire is 20 years, so you know I'm kind of getting closer. A treasury bond is gaining 
to 5%. So that's 17 years my money will double. If I have $100,000, I invested all in the treasury bond, in 17 years I'll have $200,000. And that's just following the simple rule of 72. The length of time I invest times the interest I'm getting, when it equals 72, the money will double. Um, so in the world of investing, that's what you're kind of looking for. The greater risk that you put in your money um, or into an investment, the greater reward it will return for you. Now, CDs, savings accounts, and treasury bonds, which are United States government treasury bonds, uh, are some of the safest investments in the round. That's why if you put it in there, your you know, dollar to donuts, you're going to get that money back by the time uh, the, uh, the investment matures. But if I want more in return, then I'm going to have to invest in something that's a little bit more risky. So that brings me to Greek bonds. Right now, a Greek bond is yielding like 28%. <laughs> so my money will double two and a half years. Well, I'm not sure if the Greek government is going to be around in two and a half years. <laughs> Another great investment right now would be a TEPCO. TEPCO is the company that owns the Fujiyama uh, a nuclear power plant. Their investment dropped 64% almost overnight. So if I invest at, uh, at you know, they're, they're, they're down that low, it surely is going to come back when they fix the problem. Uh, my money will double in less than a year. But that might not be the smart kind of investment I want at this point in my career. Um, that comes to the second point I want to make is when you invest in something, there's a, a, a comfort level uh, that you might want to address that um, might be good for this guy, but may, may, may not be good for me. Um, so where do you want to invest that you'll get the highest rate of return that you feel you're very comfortable with um, that fits with your moral, uh, uh, I mean, I have no problem with investing in a, a, a Nike or these other plants that might use kind of labor sources that you may disagree with. Some people have issues with um, um, uh, non-renewable energy sources. So you have to make your decision on yourself. I can't tell you where you want to invest, but what I can tell you in general is since the uh, stock market was first uh, since they first started keeping records on the stock market, it has returned 11.4% annually. Um, some years have been worse, uh, some years have been better. Uh, years that have not been so good have been like 2008, uh, just recently, uh, 2001, which is the uh, dot-com bubble when it popped, which got me to change careers, 1974, um, and 1929, I think we've all seen a lot of movies about that one. Um, but the years in between have been a lot better than the years that have been worse. So on average, it has returned 11.4%. Uh, uh, so if you do the math, and if you just invest in a market, or if you invest in an investment that, that tracks to the, to the growth of the stock market, and you get 11.4% return annually, that means your money will double every six and a half years. Um, so now I'm this 22-year-old who just got a job at Game Salad, and I throw $5,000 into the stock market for the, my folks gave me for a graduation. Um, well, I know there's a lot of ifs in that, but uh, in 45 years, if he doesn't touch it, that will grow to over a million dollars. A million, $84,923.53. Million so if he just throws that money into the market and doesn't look, um, theoretically, it'll be sitting there for him when, he, when it's time to retire, for him to pull it for retirement. Because I don't know about you, but I don't think Social Security is going to be there in 45 years. Um, so my point is that the earlier you start investing, the better, because the compound interest will, 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 will double the money, and actually at some point you can stop saving for retirement. Somewhere around the age of 35 or 40, you can actually stop saving for retirement, which is a good thing because there's going to be a lot of demands on your money. Uh, demands like uh, buying a home, getting married, braces for the kids, uh, someone might become ill, or you might want to pay for the college for your kids just what, like your folks paid for your college. Um, also, if you're in the game industry, there's a really good chance you're going to be job hopping. <laughs> if that were to happen, no, no. What do you do in the downtime? In the downtime, you spend your savings. 
and that in, in, that cuts into this 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 the, this growth we're trying to build for you. So that's what I try to help people do. I try to help people kind of take a look at what the uh, demands are on their money, what their priorities are, and keep them on track for for the long term. Uh, and 20 years from now. One of you guys will be up here speaking uh, in front of the crowd in, in my place, and uh, you'll be right in the middle of your career. And at that point, you're going to take a look at, you know, where was I? Did, I? did I start saving 20 years ago, or am I just now starting to save? Um, and hopefully, just by sitting here listening to me today, you will, like, even $100 a month will get you to where you'd like to be. And that's all I have to say. Sorry about the uh, the problem with the uh, PowerPoint. <laughs>